Hello ladies and gents, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be going over the top 5 problems that I've found on PlayStation 5s since they've been released. So in this video I'm going to go over the problems that we're facing and some potential solutions to get your PlayStation 5 back up and running. As you can see I've got two motherboards here, one is working because it's been fixed and one has been declared as a no fix. So some of the problems are fixable, but some of them are not. So let's get into the workbench and we'll go over the top five reasons why your PlayStation 5 is failing. So kicking off with the number one reason why PlayStation 5s are breaking down and failing is of course going to be the HDMI port. Now the HDMI port on the PlayStation 4 Pro was fairly durable, but unfortunately on the PlayStation 4 original the HDMI port was fairly weak. And it does seem that Sony have done it again. So on the PlayStation 5, the HDMI port is incredibly weak. And you can take a look at this one right here. And this, of course, is a replacement HDMI port, which I've installed. And this has got to be the number one reason for HDMI failures. So you can take a look on this donor board I've got here. And as you can see, we've got the normal HDMI header. But the problem with the HDMI header is the fact that on the back the pins are exposed. And what tends to happen is even the slightest bit of impact will knock the HDMI port. And unfortunately that will knock the pins clean off the board. Now sometimes you'll get a flickering display and sometimes you'll get no display at all. Sometimes it won't even be recognised by the television. So the way to fix this is of course to have a professional or to do it yourself to replace the HDMI port. It can get quite costly depending on where you go, but if you've got a soldering iron like this one here, and a hot air station like this one just here, then it is a job that you can do fairly quickly at home, and it's fairly easy to do as well. A HDMI port on the PlayStation 5 you can pick up from places like eBay, Amazon, AliExpress, and they're not that expensive. From AliExpress, I pay around about £1, which is around about $1.50. And like I said, they are very, very easy to replace yourself. Now, sometimes you'll get a HDMI port which will look absolutely fine. So it will look absolutely mint condition, such as this one does here. And unfortunately, it still won't display. Now, that can be down to one of two reasons. It can be down to the fact that the pins have broken off the board itself or it can be down to the HDMI encoder. The HDMI encoder unfortunately at the time of filming this isn't available to purchase and we have to take them from donor boards. So unfortunately if the HDMI encoder has failed then at the minute it's going to be fairly difficult to get the device repaired. The best solution for that is to either wait or to contact Sony and Sony, I believe, are offering out of warranty repairs for £240, which is around about $300. US So if your console is out of warranty, then you can, of course, contact Sony and they will help, but they will charge a premium for doing so. So unfortunately, at the time of filming this, the HDMI encoder is generally going to be unfixable unless the technician or yourself has got a donor board. And the way to fix that, of course, is to just take the old encoder off and replace it with a working one, and that should fix all display issues. The second reason why these consoles are failing is going to be down to a chip on the back, which is just here. And I'll leave a link to this chip in the top comment and in the video description as well. And as far as I'm aware, this is down to a HDMI issue. If you've had something like a lightning strike or something like that, I believe it takes out this chip, but it can also take out this little fuse as well. So if we take a look at this here, we've got F7002, and there's a fuse just here, which is supposed to have 5 volts running on both sides of it. Um, there's a couple of things I've found where this fails. Number one is where the fuse just blows, and I can't work out a reason why some of the time, but other times it's blowing because we've got a short circuit around here. So we're supposed to get 5 volts on this side of the fuse. It's supposed to come into this chip here, up here, and then this chip handles the 3.3 volt regulation. 
and it comes out here through this inductor and then off to where it needs to go and sometimes you'll have a short on the capacitors here which I found in a couple of videos and sometimes you'll have a short on the chip itself you can get them off AliExpress and I'll leave a link in the top comment but they are going to be expensive at least until supply is a little bit better for them so the way to fix it is like I said just replace this chip or replace these capacitors here if these capacitors fail and possibly replace the fuse as well and that should fix that issue the typical symptom for that would be a two second blue light of death or a single beep with no light and the console won't turn on uh, like I said it's typically down to this area just here the third most popular issue on the PlayStation 5 is of course the power supply itself the power supply is obviously responsible for handling all of the power distribution onto the board so we have the AC voltage your mains voltage coming in and then we get 12 volts DC out on the power supply and the common issue on these which I've found so far is the PWMIC and the PWMIC seems to fail spectacularly where it will get incredibly hot and the power supply just won't output 12 volts unfortunately I don't know enough about power supplies to give much advice on repairing the power supply so all I can say really is to try and replace it because like I said I'm not a power supply technician and power supplies are very dangerous to work on anyway so I don't recommend repairing the power supply unless you're experienced or unless you've got no other choice now unfortunately the power supplies are going for a premium and on average I'm paying around about 110 British pounds which is around about 150 US dollars and like I said they're fairly expensive and they are pretty hard to come by as well so I do recommend trying to replace it if you can but the symptoms on this is going to be where you've got no power at all and the console won't even attempt to turn on if you use a multimeter while the power supply is plugged in you can test this point here so you've got a ground point on the right hand side here or any of these copper looking uh, surroundings here so all of this around here is going to be a ground point and then you can test the 12 volt input here and if you've got no 12 volt input while it's plugged in then the likely issue is your power supply and just replacing the power supply should normally fix it the fourth most popular issue on the PlayStation 5 is going to be these capacitors just down here so on the APU side of the board nearby to F7501 we've got a bank of four capacitors and an inductor and generally the third capacitor along tends to fail I don't know why it fails I don't know what the cause of the failure is I think that capacitor might be a little bit weaker than the rest of the capacitors on the board and or rather in that area and that third one across seems to fail I will try and point to that so just here we've got a bank of capacitors and the one that I'm pointing at with this blade is the one that tends to fail I can't say it's going to be that one every time I don't know why it does it on that specific cap but it just does and usually either just taking that cap off or replacing it with one from a donor board generally is going to fix the issue and you're generally going to get it back up and running quite quickly so the way to test that is to pop on the back of the board make sure that you've got no power plugged in and that the power supply is disconnected so slightly lift the board up away from the power supply and test around this area here or this area here and if you've got any short circuits in this area then you're likely going to have a short on this side of the board and the bank of capacitors just here in the middle is generally going to be the cause the final most popular issue with the PlayStation 5 is going to be the safe bridge so the safe bridge is located just here it's a BGA chip and this is quite a difficult one to do because we can't buy these chips which means again they have to come from donor boards the part number just in case you can buy them when you're watching this video is CXD 90061GG and it's a 18 by 18 BGA I'm not sure if they're available yet I haven't found any myself but this safe bridge is failing and it's failing quite often and unfortunately the only way at the time of filming as far as I'm aware to repair this is to take one from a donor board 
reboil it and that's going to be the process of taking some solder balls and replacing the solder balls on the chip here's an example south bridge just here and this is actually a cxd 9061gg so this is the correct south bridge for the ps5 this one's not reboiled but what you would do is you would take a soldering iron and some wick you would clean off all of these pads on the chip and then replace every single one of them with a fresh solder ball and then you would solder that onto your board and what that would do is it would clear away any shorts which are typically on the 1.1 volt line which you can find a short just here just around this inductor just here at the bottom and if that is shorted then you've generally got a bad safe bridge and generally replacing the safe bridge is going to fix all the issues the symptoms for that again are going to be a beep and then no life or you'll get completely no power at all because the safe bridge will shut down and go into protection mode and in turn the power supply will go into protection mode so those are going to be the top five problems which i found so far on the playstation 5 unfortunately three of them are fairly difficult fixes one of them is a difficult fix because we can't really buy the power supplies fairly cheaply and the fifth one well the most popular one is an easy fix and it should be a fairly cheap fix as well so i hope this video helps you to understand more about the issues that we're facing with the playstation 5 and if you want to learn more about some of the issues i do have quite a few videos covering these topics as i'm finding them on my channel I'll leave a link in the video description to some of those and hopefully they will help you to actually fault find properly and find the issue with your console. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'll always do my best to answer. And if you do want to organise a repair, if you're not capable of doing it yourself or you're not competent enough, then I do offer repair services. There's a link in the video description to my booking website where you can book in the repair. If you are shipping from overseas, please get in touch first because I will we'll need to explain the process and explain about customs, import fees and things like that and how to not pay them legally because you shouldn't have to pay custom fees for sending things off for repair. But a lot of people do make that mistake and they declare it too high. They don't declare it as being sent for repair and they end up having to pay custom fees. So get in touch first if you're shipping from overseas and I'll help you to ship it where you won't have to pay any import fees. If you are new to the channel and you like this type of content, if you like repair content in general, then be sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on bell notifications and that way you don't miss any future videos. And I also live stream on Twitch and YouTube as well, so you'll get notified when I go live as well. Remember to give the video a thumbs up if you did find it useful, it really does help out the channel. And if you want to support me in any way, shape or form, then you can head over to Twitch and become a Prime subscriber. It's absolutely free for you to do and it does help me out a lot. So I really do appreciate the people that support me. But that's going to be it for this one. Thank you very much for watching and until next time, I'll see you later. Bye for now.